Hey, sports fans, Coach Nick here, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. In case you missed it, we covered the 19-4 run to start Game 3 here, and the comments were filled with angry people who felt I didn't give the Cavaliers enough credit. One of the only conclusions I can make is that they didn't watch the entire video, since there was plenty of praise and blame to go around for both teams. With that in mind, I'll keep track of the positive to negative analysis in this video as we go through the 19-5 run to start the second half that effectively ended this game before the third quarter was halfway through. Let's start with the Warriors opening possession where they curl Clay around Bogut and then break into pinch post action. Curry reads this well and flare cuts to get wide open at the three point line. For some reason, Bogut holds the ball an extra beat, allowing an extra second for Thompson to contest this well and contribute to the miss. The Cavs come down, set a step up screen on Curry, which gets Barnes on Kyrie. I would have thought they'd prefer Curry on him, but no matter, offense isn't necessary when Kyrie is hitting these kind of tough ISO shots. Good defense, better offense. The Warriors set a double staggered pin down for Clay, who decides to cut back door. This flows into a pin down for Curry. JR makes a poor decision to go underneath the screen, but because he shows good effort to drive into Bogut's body, it forces the ref to call this moving screen, eliminating the ISO opportunity for Curry on Thompson. With a 12 point lead in the crowd behind them, the Cavs clear the right side to ball screen for Kyrie. The defense does a good job to contain and rotate, good contest, but better shot making as Tristan uses the rare and possibly unintentional straight on bank shot from 8 feet out. The Warriors come down and want to run pistol action where Clay gets the handoff into an inside ball screen from Draymond. However, Kyrie reaches in to blow it up. It does leave him way out of position, but LeBron helps one pass away. Curry gets right to the rim anyway, and on this dump off pass, you can see LeBron does not get the ball, but Boca does not get the call. This leads to a fast break and well contained by Draymond in the lane, good ball movement by the Cavs, and J.R. Smith attacks the glass and forces the foul on Curry. The Warriors break into motion weak, that brings Bogut out to set an inside ball screen for Curry. Curry attacks too early before Bogut can get set. However, they catch Richard Jefferson sleeping as his man Harrison Barnes is just standing by himself at the three point line and splashes the jumper. So the Cavs seem to have identified how they want to attack Curry on defense. Get him on Kyrie, then ball screen for him. This sucks in four defenders and Kyrie almost makes an absolutely incredible scoop shot. But Bogut doesn't box out, enables Thompson to shove him under the board, and then instead of trying to grab the rebound, he tips it back out. This action is reserved for offensive players who want to keep the possession alive, not for the defense. Sheesh. The Cavs are able to track down a loose ball, and the Warriors do an excellent job to recover on both the LeBron drive, where he almost travels, and good closeout by Curry to almost force a steal from JR. This turns into an ISO, the kind that hadn't worked at all in the first two games for Cleveland. Curry does a good job to keep him in front, but JR has it cooking as he hits the long two. On the sideline out of bounds, the Warriors only have two seconds to shoot it, so they run an elevator play for Curry, where Bogut and Draymond are supposed to slide together and take Kyrie out. It's a weird spot for the inbound, and I also think Bogut and Green were too high, not enough room for Curry to get through and find a spot to shoot it. On top of that, Kyrie sniffs this out perfectly and just stands in front of the doors, denying Curry entry. Bogut has no choice but to pop out and J it up. With the lead at 14, this is the make or break time for the Warriors. Curry gets an excellent steal when he uses his inside hand to knock the ball away. And while this pass might have been a little off target, it felt like Clay need only reach out in front of him, knock it down, then continue onto the hoop for a layup. Instead, he lets it bounce wide, tracks it down to the three-point line, then takes a bad contested three-point shot with nary a teammate in sight. Still down 14, the Warriors run the loop for Curry with terrific pursuit by Kyrie. They get J.R. Smith helping way too far over one pass away off Clay, and this would have been a good decision to shoot the ball. But watch how LeBron stunts hard at him. This is terrific defense and makes Clay put the ball back in his pocket. Thompson does get the ball back in the corner and beats Smith into the middle. A big no-no. But Thompson shows poor footwork as he plants, gets no lift on the fadeaway, and misses the 10-footer. 
Bogut is right there to tap it in, but you can see Thompson clearly whacks him across the wrist, making it miss, but no call. Still up 14, LeBron decides to ISO, and let's face it, with the way LeBron has been shooting lately, a 23-foot contested shot with 17 seconds on the shot clock is not a great decision by him. But they have a big cushion, and when it goes in, the crowd is happy. The Warriors look to go inside to Draymond, who promptly spins right by LeBron on his way to the hoop. However, he alligator arms the finish, and LeBron swoops in for the nice block. Down 16, this game is about to get out of hand, so the Warriors run pistol for Curry and they get Thompson switched out onto him. Curry takes him way too close to Klay Thompson in the corner where the spacing gets tight, but if you watch this very carefully, you'll see the ball goes right off of Thompson's left foot out of bounds, but the ref can't see this and it becomes a bad turnover. This time, the Cavs decide to not run any offense and allow LeBron to isolate against his old nemesis. With a big lead, this isn't the worst option to choose. That said, the Warriors are happy to give up a 23-footer to LeBron James, but he's got it going in this quarter and extends the lead. On the flare screen for Curry, it forces a switch of Kyrie onto Iguodala. The Warriors waste no time in getting it onto him at the high post, and Iguodala takes Kyrie to the rack and scores the layup. The Cavs try to ISO Kyrie on Curry, but it's well defended by both Curry and Draymond coming over to shadow the ball. Iguodala does something very head-scratching here. As he's guarding LeBron and the screen comes, he decides to cross his left foot in front of his right, then clap his hands together. Now his feet are in terrible position to recover, allowing penetration with the bounce pass to the roll man. The Warriors are now in scramble mode, and when JR gets Clay to fly by on the contest, he's got a nice step back to his left hop three with perfect rhythm. Notice the beautiful short but explosive hop into this shot. With the air slowly being sucked out of the Warriors, Clay gets a long down court pass, tries to drive lefty, but watch the footwork. His right foot plants with too much weight to the outside of his foot. It triggers a loss of balance and he crashes to the floor, committing a very bad turnover. LeBron again goes to work on an ISO, this time in the post, but as he's backing down, he forgets the ball and as it gets loose. He should be grabbing this, but instead makes a poor decision to tap it back out and it's a turnover. The Warriors get Jefferson to stun the ball one pass away, and it does open a decent look from three, but Barnes can't hit. With LeBron shooting 33% from three in the playoffs overall, I imagine the Warriors have no problem with him pulling up off the dribble in transition, but with a big lead, there's no pressure, and he effectively ends the game with this demoralizer. So there you have it, sports fans. The Warriors starters got blitzed in their nine minutes together as the Jefferson for Love adjustment changed the dynamic of the Cavaliers team, mainly defensively. Is this an anomaly or have the Cavaliers figured something out? The final tally ended up with more Cavs good than anything else, with the Warriors having more bad than good, which matches what happened on the floor. With Love coming off the bench tonight for Game 4, how will that change the advantage the Warriors have had with the second units? Can the Warriors shake off their malaise and find a renewed focus and energy? There's only one way to find out, so join me tonight on Twitter during the game and right back here afterwards for our live post-game show. You in?